San Ramon Valley High School in Danville is one of the first schools involved in an innovative science education pilot program designed to spark students' interest by bringing real scientists and their laboratories right into the classroom. The schools selected a class of advanced placement biology students to take part. As they watched a projection screen in their classroom, some 35 miles away at the Center for Accelerator Mass Spectrometry, otherwise known as CAMS, at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, two scientists facing a camera were speaking directly to the students. CAMS is the nation's premier facility for analyzing isotopes. It has a wide range of uses, including carbon-14 dating, tracing medicines as they travel throughout the human body, studying atmospheric chemistry, and more. The idea here is to take the students inside this facility, which is not normally open to visitors. But more than that, it allows them to interact with the scientists. And we're going to be pretty open about questions. You can talk about the technology, you can talk about the science, you can talk about the careers and other opportunities. And the scientists are able to see and hear this introduction. The output from a relatively small camera unit, which is mounted at the front of the classroom, shows up in front of them and allows them to interact easily with the students. So I'm holding a piece of wood, a branch from a tree, and I'd like somebody on your end to tell me where the mass of this tree came from. What makes up the mass of this and where did it come from? Let's see all those hands go up. <laughs> Someone right up here. right here. Real quick. Atmosphere. Very good, the atmosphere. Good it's amazing how many people, even, even people who have science degrees, think this came out of the soil. After the students get an introduction to the subject of how the accelerator can be used to do carbon-14 testing, it's time to actually show off the high-tech equipment and explain its components. Even here, the emphasis is on interactivity. Even the teacher gets in on the action. Are you, like, doing a time where, you know, you check one hour, two hours, For the hours. pilot program, technicians from Livermore Lab's television studio ran the show from the lab's end of things. But future sessions won't really require such an elaborate setup to allow the scientists to interact this way with the students. And Miranda will show you when we go back inside what that looks like on our um, data collection system. John, we have, a, yes, we have another question in the back. Uh, yeah, yeah, how sure. did the hydrogen get introduced to make it um, uh, um, C um, CH uh, with minus? Yeah. Did you, did you catch that, John? How did the CH molecule... Where did the hydrogen come from? Oh, it comes through the chemical reduction process. So remember that the scientist in the classroom model worked well even with younger students. The pilot program included a similar session at a different school in Danville. We are here at Gale Ranch Middle School, our newest middle school in the San Ramon Valley Unified School District, home of the Fighting Griffins. And we are in the classroom of Christy Tyler. And Christy is, uh, is a teacher of the seventh grade science class. The program here again focused on Lawrence Livermore's Accelerator Center, introducing the students to the science involved and then giving them a tour of the facility. John Nezovich, the former director of CAMS, was joined by researcher Karis McFarlane. Does, does anybody there in your class know what an El Nino is? Have you heard that term in terms of weather or climate? Um, it's where the trade winds over the Pacific Ocean um, grow stronger and warm water from Australia gets surged towards the um, South American coast. Okay, so what happens when that happens? Is it deep ocean That's water? That's the introduction a basic outline of the science behind this technology. What makes this program unique is its ability to go one step further, taking the students inside to get a guided tour of the facility, a place they would not otherwise be able to visit. Let's walk down here. So what you're hearing inside the tank are two things that look like bicycle chains. They're going around and they're depositing a charge near the middle of the tank. So most of the space in this tank is actually empty. So imagine, if you will, that there are things that look like bicycle chains running around, and this is what that chain looks like. 
and it's depositing a positive charge at what we call the terminal. It's an extraordinary opportunity, not only to visit a facility where cutting edge research is taking place right now, but to interact with the scientists who are making it happen. The feedback couldn't have been more positive. Amazing. It helped me reach my goal in this classroom, which is to bring my class to life. So you guys brought science into my classroom, which opened up the walls. Our classroom is now way beyond the walls of this classroom, which is all that I could ever hope for. The whole carbon dating thing was very interesting. I don't really know, I didn't know much about it now, um, and now I do. And it was cool because I'm actually taking physics right now, and I got to compare what I've learned about magnets and magnetism, and um, I could follow along, which was nice. It definitely op opens up the possibility of talking to people from different laboratories who aren't as near as Lawrence Livermore, which is only like 35 miles away. We have the possibility to talk to people at major research institutions like universities and you know, people doing really cool uh, research projects that might pertain to ours, might not, but might just be, you know, worth talking to. And I thought that was really cool. And so. Thank you so much. I think this was a success, and uh, we look forward to doing more and more of this type of work. And you know, once again, we can't say thank you enough.